If you're looking for plug-and-play, fully enclosed 3D printer, capable of printing high-quality ABS prints, as well as the other type of filaments without too much of the hassle, then this 3D printer might be your choice. Stay tuned! Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video, and this is iMates from Chiditech. iMates is a fully enclosed 3D printer, which makes it perfect for printing high-quality ABS prints that require enclosure with a constant temperature. This 3D printer comes with a decent print volume of 260 by 200 by 200 mm on Z-axis, which should be good enough for most makers. It comes with direct drive extruder that supports many type of filaments. It has magnetic flexible build plate, touch LCD screen, it supports printing over USB stick or over the Wi-Fi. In terms of extra features, the iMates supports resume printing after power loss. Now when it comes to design, iMates looks pretty nice. The printer comes in a black color and all side panels that covers the metal frame are made of injected model plastic. One quick look at the top of the printer, we can see a transparent top cover that is attached with the magnets, so you can easily remove it when you need access to the print head or when you print filament like PLA that doesn't require enclosure. On the front side of the printer there is a wide magnetic door with a transparent plexiglass that gives you nice and wide access to your prints. Inside the enclosure there is a built-in LED light so you can monitor the printing process even in the dark. Under the front door there is a USB port and a LCD screen. And on the left and right we have the side magnetic panels that you can easily remove when you want to. On the back of the printer there is a spool holder that retracts, AC socket with a fuse and the main on-off power switch. In terms of printer controls, the iMates comes with a touch LCD screen. The screen itself is decent resolution, it's bright responsive and it have a good viewing angles. The software interface on this printer is simply and straightforward. The icon on the screen are nice and big with a decent space between them. Navigation through the menu is without lag and everything is where it should, but there is a few interesting things. For example, while you print, you can turn on or off enclosure light. And before each print, you can see the small preview of the model, which is nice. Under the metal plastic, the iMates has a metal frame, which is very robust and solid. The X and Y carriages are sliding on a 10mm steel rods and the heat bed platform are made of 2mm folded steel sheet that slides on a dual 12mm steel rods and what is even more impressive is that the iMates has a heated bed which is made of 7mm thick aluminum plate which is really impressive for a desktop 3D printer. This robust industrial heated bed is packed with a high temperature tolerant magnets which hold this steel build plate very strong in a place and when you level this 3D printer once you don't have to think about it for a very long time. Also the heat bed warms up reasonably fast Consider how thick actually is. Here is the list of the time intervals. Now the build plate itself is made of steel sheet and it can be used in two ways. On one side there is a built tech printing surface which is suitable for PLA, PTG, TPU and ABS prints while the other side of the build plate with a combination of glue stick is meant to be used for filaments like nylon polycarbonate and etc. By having the flexible bill plate, remove the prints from it, it's very easy. Just bend it in opposite direction and the prints will pop up. The cable management on iMates is nicely done. All cable wires that connect the print head and the motherboard are combined into one single flat cable, which is very nice and clean solution. And on other side of the X carriage, there is a powerful filament turbo fan which blows the air precisely underneath the tip of the nozzle, which is great. Now let's do the quick unboxing and setup. This is the shipping box of the iMates and it's a pretty large. Inside of the shipping box you're gonna find thank you note, quick instructions and video how to install extra 0.2mm extruder. Next we have an extra build plate and there is a very nice and detailed call for a guide which is full of useful information. It will tell you how to unbox the printer, how to set it up, how to use the slicer, how to print, pretty much everything to get you started. And for those who use Simplify 3D, there is a printer profile, which is very nice. Once I take the printer out from the box, I place it on the desk. I found these side magnetic plates underneath the printer and I place them on the side of the desk. Then I start to remove plastic protective foil and the plastic wrap. 
Next step was to remove the zip ties that was holding the print head in a place during the shipping. I use my small cutters, but you can use knife or scissors. Once I cut the zip ties, I carefully free the print head from the protective styrofoam and then I remove the paper clips that was securing the rubber belts. And now the print head can move freely. Next I open the front door and I take out the top cover and then I take out the power cable and I plug in the printer. I switch it on and I lift the build platform from the software interface which allow me to remove protective styrofoam that was secure in the heat bed during the shipping. Inside the printer there was some more stuff. Next we have a glue stick, 16GB flash memory stick on which you're gonna find video guides with the troubleshooting, chili slicer software, slicer profiles, test G codes and all kinds of useful information which is very nice. Next we have a spool holder part and there is extra print head or print extruder if you like that comes completely assembled with all the components and with a more precise 0.2mm nozzle. So you can switch extruders when you need some extra precise prints which is great. Next we have one spool of filament 500 grams, power cable, plate leveling paper, we have a small bag with the tools, spare nozzle and extra parts and screws inside. Next we have a screwdriver and a spatula. And lastly we have the spool holder bar. And unboxing is done. Next up I installed the filament and leveled the heated bed, which takes around 2 minutes and the iMates was ready to run. Since there is no assembling, for the whole unboxing and setup you need around 15 to 20 minutes, which makes this 3D printer very beginner friendly. And now let's talk about the print quality. The print quality of the iMates is impressive, one of the best that I've seen. The printer comes with a chili slicer and even with a standard print profile and stock print settings I was getting pretty good print results. For more advanced users that use Simplified 3D there is a supplied print profile which will give you even better prints. For this video review I have printed quite a few test prints in PLA, PTG, ABS, nylon and TPU filament. So let's start first with the PLA. Test prints printed with a white basic PLA that comes with a printer looks great. At first I printed the test G code that comes with a printer which turned out very nice and accurate. Then I print out a few 3D benches in different layer height. One in 0.2, one in 0.15 and one in 0.1 mm layer height and all of them turn out pretty much perfect. Then I slice and print this ball bearing and it turned out great as well. And thanks to magnetic flexible build plate, it was very easy to remove it. The bearing looks perfect and it spins nice. So far, so good. Then I print FDM benchmark test print and I gotta say that iMeds perform very good on this test. The print quality looks great. Retractions are nice, as well overhangs and bridges, and the print accuracy was on spot. Only thing that I noticed after detailed close inspection are some slight ringing on a Y axis, but other than that everything looks great. For those who wonder about the noise level when printing, the printer comes with a silent stepper drivers, and my dB meter shows around 52 dB, which is pretty good. Next, I changed the white basic PLA that comes with the printer and I installed some high quality PLA and I started to print baby grot. Even through the half of the print, I could already see that the baby grot will look very nice when it's finished. And indeed, that was the case. Once again, I removed the print from the build plate with ease and the print turned out awesome. Here is the close up look and I like how nicely this model was designed. It's packed with so much details and it turns out great even if I did not use the highest resolution that a printer can do. Now for my next print, I wanted to print something more complicated, something more like a mechanical part. So I found this awesome model of the Ford V6 engine block. I slice it and I print it with the same PLA with which I print the baby grot. After more than 30 hours of printing, the print was completed and the Ford engine block turned out fantastic. And again, thanks to the magnetic steel sheet, it was very easy to remove print from the build platform. All I need now is to remove support material 
and here it is. The Ford V6 engine block, printed with the iMates. It turns out very nice, almost a perfect print. Cool. And now it's time to test the PTG filament. So I left the printer to print overnight, and in the morning, this beautiful waste was finished, and it turned out perfect. Here is a close look. The layer is bonded so nice, and I love it. Now from my next print of the PTG, I slice this awesome burst of the Deadpool, and I start to print. This model is a bit challenged to print with the PTG, because of the two swords on the back of the model. So the printer needs to retract filament many times, which can lead to stringing, and PTG loves to string. So I'm very curious how it will turn out on the end. Alright, the printing is now complete, and the results was great. The print turned out awesome, with all of the details, and the back of the model was printed perfect as well. Here is a close look. Nice. Alright, and now it's time to test ABS, TPU and nylon. So I quickly print out the quadcopter arm, first in ABS, which turned out perfect, and with zero warping. Next I print out the same print, but this time in a flexible filament. And it turned out great as well. And last but not least is the nylon. So I print out the same model, this time in a nylon, but it did not turn out that great, and it had some burn spots. Because my spool of nylon is a few years old, and it's a full of moisture, and I did not bother to dry it in an oven, as it will take days to dry it completely. So this one is on me. I'm sure that the printer will print this model perfectly fine with a new spool of nylon. But to make it up to you guys, I decided to print out the same Ford V6 engine block, but this time in ABS. This will be very long and challenging print, consider that ABS loves to warp and cracks, but since the iMates have a nice enclosure, I'm sure it can pull this off. If you're interested about the enclosure temperature while printing ABS, I place the small temperature sensor and the temperature inside the enclosure are stable at 55 degrees Celsius, which is nice. So far the model shows no sign of warping, and the temperature that I'm using for this ABS filament are 225 degrees on the hot end and 100 degrees on the heated bed. So far, everything is going as it should. And after 35 hours of printing, the V6 engine block printed in ABS was completed. And let's check it out. Well, I don't see any warping from any side, which is really cool. And after that I remove the model from the build plate, I clean out the supports and here is a close-up look. I gotta say, to print out this complicated model in ABS in such a great quality with zero warping and no crack layers is very impressive. This printer is ABS kink. Awesome. And now, the final words. Well guys, after spending some quality time testing and printing on this 3D printer, I gotta say that I'm very impressed with the performance, reliability and print quality of this machine, especially with the ABS filament. In terms of any cons, there are few. The first one is the lack of the power button on the front panel, so you have to reach the back of the printer to switch it off. The second cons is the lack of the filament runout switch, which is sometimes handy, but it's not must to have. Also, I have to comment the price and the fact that this iMates is twice as less expensive than its bigger brother X-Max, which I reviewed the last year, makes this iMates 3D printer excellent choice for anyone who is looking for the safe and reliable fully enclosed 3D printer with a high print quality that works as it should right out of the box. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful, a link of iMates and the X-Max 3D printer you can find in the video description. And if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave the comment. Thanks for watching and I see you next time. Bye bye.